Hello everybody, welcome back on this beautiful Saturday afternoon to St. Clair Broadcast. I'm your host Theo, known as the Holy Juan. I'm joined by Tommy, also known as Nakatan. And today we got some League of Legends action, CEO. We got our Saints taking on Johns Hopkins University. There we go. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Our Saints have a pretty good track record against them, but maybe we're going to see something new today. How are you feeling today to start off the day? I'm feeling pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Yeah. Just another day for our Saints and League of Legends. They've been pretty good this season to start off uh, flawless so far, I believe, and they're going to look to keep it going. Yeah, I also would like to see, I'm pretty sure I saw a Miracle in the facility early today, so I would yeah. like to see him play today, if yeah. possible. Absolutely. Because he usually just did get promoted from Academy. Yeah, he was promoted from Academy. Did not play last week, but we will see if uh, he's going to be taking Alonzo spot on that support role today. And uh, what do you think he adds to the team uh, being brought up? He just adds a lot of um, motivation for the team to keep playing because, you know, people do get burnt out by playing too much of anything or just doing much of anything. Yeah. Well, too much of anything. <laughs> so he just adds that, that drive to the team. And he's also very new to competitive, so it's a nice... Fresh breather for the team, full of veterans. Yeah, and you could look at our team there. Matty, Alonzo, there's Miracle Rocco, uh, there's Bakery Boy as well, and Ricky should be there as well. He was there a bit earlier. Uh, and I, I don't know if Alonzo or Miracle are starting, is starting today, who's starting, but it would be interesting. It looks we... like um, Alonzo is starting yeah. from the looks of it because he yeah. looks Warming like he's, uh, his, he's in practice too at the moment. Yeah. So, you know, they could, he could just be looking at draft and things like that, obviously. But from the look of things, it looks like Alonzo will be the one starting off today. And, you know, watching them play, our Saints, they like to play uh, around their top side from what it seems like in the first two weeks. They really prioritized those Void Grubs in the early game. It just They want to give Ricky those carry champs and play around that and kind of sacking their bot lane. It's worked for them so far. What do you think? Uh, is that maybe the best way to approach this new season, or what do you think? Yeah, considering that um, Saints do usually put Ricky on those carry top laners like Darius or Olaf, um, Olaf as well. Olaf is very uncommon from what I know. It's Not like a Ricky. very Ricky special. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'd say it's a pretty good strategy if they're going to have him on carry top laners. If it was on a tank, uh, tank top laner, it would be the other case scenario where yeah. it's better to play bot side towards um, dragons. Yeah. But it's worked for them so far. I mean, yeah. they've looked pretty good ending, I think, every single game so far in under 30 minutes. They've made a few slip-ups here and there, but have been pretty pretty good with their macro play. So uh, it's going to be interesting to look at that. Let's talk about maybe the newest patch, 14.3. Uh, a lot of things coming through, a lot of nerfs, buffs, and... A lot of different uh, characters. You could see Azir, Brand, Ezreal, Karma, Lilia, Ranger, and Trundle all getting nerfs. And on the buffs, a lot of new champions. Asol, Nidalee, Pike, Shaco, Shivana, Talia, Timo, Wukong, Yorick, Zeri, and Ziggs. Didn't see too many of those cha champs, really. What's the biggest outstanding I'll, as a As a Shaco main myself, I, I love seeing him get buffs, but I don't play the game anymore, unfortunately. Because <laughs> I have converted to TFT. That's fair. But considering what what I've observed over the last couple weeks watching uh, our Saints play, I feel like they're most affected because Baker Boy does play a lot of Corky as well. Because yeah. yeah. he has risen in popularity uh, with this new season with the items. Considering there's no um, Mythics anymore, now it's just Legendary items. Yeah. Yeah, Corky will be getting adjustment there. Alawi, Malka, and Zarya all will be... Uh, also, Lilia got nerfed. We all know that Maddie is a Lilia specialist, uh, so that's going to hurt them just a little bit. But looking from these buffs, uh, I don't know. Do you expect to see any of these buffed champions maybe in today's game? Cause um, the, I don't really see many of these champs. Maybe Talia. I would consider one. Ziggs because he is a pretty good um, champion to flux around because he'd be played um, mid lane and bot lane as an ADC, and he takes towers pretty fast as well and he has pretty good wave clear yeah and you know there's also a new champion that was added to the game smolder if we could take a look at the abilities of this one let's take a look we got first of all his dragon oh the passive is dragon 
practice. Hitting champions with Biz and killing enemies with super scorch breath gains a stack of dragon practice. Stacks increase the damage of Smolder's basic attack, so an infinitely scaling ADC. First one in the game. Sounds like Vagar to me. Sounds like a very, very strong champ. Do you think there's any chance we're going to see that one today? Um, considering that, um, I think roughly at around 225 stacks, if uh, the ADC does manage to get that many stacks on Smolder, um, the passive has a built-in Elder Dragon buff. Yeah. And it does, and the abilities do get stronger as um, as you get more stacks. So same thing as Vagar or Nasus or Bard, it's infinite scaling. Mm -hmm. So that if they were to pick Smolder, it would be a late, like a late game win condition. And speaking of stacks, I have actually seen um, some videos of Smolder at, at roughly around 5,000 stacks. It <laughs> is very comical, yeah. to say the least. That is fair enough. Uh, we're going to be going to draft soon, but before we do, would you th do you think Smolder is better in the mid lane or in the ball lane? Because from the look of things, I've been seeing Smolder play a, li a little bit more maybe in the mid lane than the ball lane. Uh, it seems like Smolder has like limited range compared to the other ADCs, so I don't think he is really suited to play mid lane because he's very vulnerable. He doesn't have a lot of mobility outside of his E, which is it's like a like a ner like a how do I how do I describe this? Kind of like a Talon parkour sort of, but you only use it like every like maybe ten seconds mm -hmm. compared to Talon, we can just use like whatever. But his ulti is the most interesting one because it's like, yeah, as you can see there, he just he just calls a bigger dragon to, to breathe um, fire upon uh, the rift. Kind of looks like a Pantheon ultimate. Yeah, anyway. a little bit. The like the new Pantheon ulti, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I always think about the old one where he like jumps in the air, then like lands <laughs> in a circle. But that's like very old Pantheon. Then. I don't. I don't even know that. There, I, I there play. I go aging myself. <laughs> I didn't play League of Legends back then. Uh, so it's gonna be an interesting matchup today. Maybe a quick score prediction coming up for you. Um, I have confidence that our guys can 2-0 Johns Hopkins University, but I could be wrong. Fair enough. I I have to agree. I think a 2-0, especially with the form that they're in. Well, it's a very, very uh, good prediction, but let's see if our predictions come true. After this very, very short break, we're going to be back with draft in game one right after this. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back everybody. We should just about be getting ready to uh, start off the draft, but with our roster today, do you think we'll see any spicy picks anywhere? You know, we have a lot of players that have some uh, characters that they're really s like specialists on. That they're known for, yeah. Yeah, do you think we'll see any of those today? Um, I would say so because everyone here has such a deep champion pool, but they do have like their, you know, their comfort picks. Everyone, everyone does. Of course. Yeah, so let's see how it's going to start off. We have Saints banning away Cassante with that first ban. Such a strong champion since release. Very, very good ban. Milio ban from John Hopkins University. That's definitely aimed uh, towards uh, Rock Boom's Lucian, who's very, very strong on that. And him and Alonzo have been tearing it up in the ball lane with that Lucian Milio combo. So that'll be banned out. Seraphine now banned away from St. Clair College. They don't want to be playing against that in the bot lane. Yeah, the Enchanter supports. Yeah, Enchanter supports, Enchanter ADCs. It's just not the most fun. Maddie's brand will be banned after he played so, so well on it last week. Good ban from John Hopkins there. And uh, let's see what Saints decides to do with their last ban. LeBlanc ban in the mid lane. A pretty strong champion. Should be a pretty good ban from them. Yeah, especially AD LeBlanc is really prevalent due to uh, a certain content creator, <laughs> should I say. Yeah, Bobby. <laughs> good old Bobby. You know, making that split pushing LeBlanc build just so oppressive. St. Clair uh, just going to ban that one out. Johns Hopkins University will ban out Varys with their last ban. Let's see what St. Clair decide to first pick here. It's going to be the Twisted Fate from Bakery. This Bakery Boy, this could both be AD or AP. Which one do you think we'll see today? Um, I mean, both builds are pretty good. You know, APTF is more towards uh, one-shotting the enemy carry, and then AD is more about... Um, damage over time obviously but you know you can play either way it just depends on uh, the, your circumstances yeah we're gonna have to see what they pick in the draft here you i think if uh ricky picks ad and, Ma and maddie picks ap in the jungle we could see an ad twisted fate come out because lilia has not been banned away it's gonna be a zin zhao though coming out from johns hopkins university in response very, very strong in the meta right now, especially with that Titanic Hydra just able to do so much damage so, so quick. And the Karma is going to be coming out from Johns Hopkins. This could be flexed three ways, basically. And where do you think it's going to go? Considering how early on in the draft that we are, it, I'm not too certain to say. But the Xin Zhao, obviously very popular pick, as you mentioned, because of the Titanic Hydra now being able to give you um, an audible reset before, like it did before um, Season 9. And looks like we have an Ash coming out, so could also be Ash support. We don't know yet. Could be, could be. Uh, I don't think so. I know Alonzo likes to play those hook champions alongside. I don't think he really plays the Ash support too often, so it will be a rock boom yep. more than likely on that mm -hmm. Ash. It looked like there was a bit of a mic problem there on the stage you see yeah. uh, Bakery Boy and Rock Boom switching up Nidalee. assets but we're gonna see the AP jungle coming out as predicted but it won't be Lilia it's gonna be Nidalee uh, something you don't see at all basically and you know unless it's paired up with a, like a Renekton top or something like it's a very be, strong top side yeah and you, you need you need an early bruiser and if it's one with some CC for that spear would be perfect alongside the TF so a very interesting pickup but definitely a risky one at that and we are all, we are playing on 14.3, so those um, those changes we did discuss before the break are in effect as well. So the brand nerf, I don't know about the brand nerf or the brand ban because he has nerfed this patch, mm -hmm. but his um, his damage over time, especially to uh, towards tanks, and the fact that he builds the Andres is very effective as well. Absolutely, and it's going to be the Jax coming out blind from the side of Johns Hopkins University. I wonder what the Saints are going to be picking into that. You can see Johns Hopkins instantly ban away the Renekton, who, I mean the Olaf, who would just be able to run through that comp. That's a very, very good ban from them. They're, they've done their scouting, which is very, very important when you go up against the Saints. And speaking of the Saints, they're going to ban out the Blitzcrank here. Don't want to see any of those hooks coming through, which means they don't think that Karma is going in that support role. Uh, considering they banned out the Blitzcrank. It's definitely a nod towards um, the Saints wanting to play an Enchanter support bot lane, because Blitzcrank does yeah. does counter those champions very well, because they are relatively, well, they're very squishy champions, to say the least. 
And we have an Aatrox ban coming towards uh, Ricky, but Darius is still open. Yeah, Darius is open. And Renekton as well. And Renekton, especially alongside Lilia. I've seen L uh, Ricky cook up some things in solo queue. I won't say them, but we might we might see an interesting pick coming out here. There's going to be the Pike ban coming out from St. Clair College as well. They're really trying to get rid of those hook champions. So I think they're going to be leaning towards that enchanter support. But it's going to be the Jin pickup coming out from Johns Hopkins University. I think a very underrated champion right now and very, very strong. I think um, Jin is popularized right now due to um, double lift playing it a lot, especially in uh, Champions queue, And he does look very strong, especially with uh, the lethality build, yeah. to, which gives him a very early power spike, and then transitions later on into crit Jin, just to match evenly with the other ADC scaling. Absolutely, and Jin into Ash doesn't seem too bad. We're gonna see a Gragas come out that should be in the top lane for Ricky. A very, very strong counter pick to Jax, who makes that lane very, very hard. And I wonder what support they're going to go here, considering they don't have much AD damage here for St. Clair. Oh, it's going to be the Smolder, which means Ash will be the support from the look of things, and Smolder ADC, unless that they cook up something devious and put AD down there in the ball lane, but I doubt that's considering gonna Considering Ash, Smolder, it kind of makes sense. Ash does give Smolder a lot of spacing with Volley as well, yeah. and the, uh, the continuous slows, and the ability to kite... Um, Jax and Xin Zhao as well, considering they're both melee champs. Hui. And it looks like we, yeah, we have Hui coming out for the mid lane from Johns Hopkins University. Hui, a pretty strong pick right now in the meta, just able to clear out waves. So much poke in lane and just so oppressive. Uh, strong champion, but definitely needs a lot of scaling. Can't really be too, too aggressive in the early game. So it's going to be Saints trying to play around that in Italy, I think, early into the game. Play for those invades, try and take away some early early objectives and I think Saints are going to look to uh, play towards that top side of the map and get those early void grubs considering they have such a good uh, matchup up in the in the top lane. Yeah considering the top side matchups I'm pr I'm I'm first for certain that they're going to be playing more towards mid lane just considering um, Jack Jack does have good um, good synergy with jungle ganking early on with counter strike yeah but so does um, Greg as well with body slam yeah and considering it's also in Italy, it's uh, it's very, very high damage. Very, very high damage. You're going to definitely see a lot of AP damage coming out here from the Saints. What do you think of TF? Will he be going AP or AD this game? Um, He can go either, honestly, because we, we, on the Saints side, there is two sources of attack damage and another two sources of AP damage as well. So depending on how Bakery Boy is feeling, he can go either way. But I'm more leaning towards um, AD, just that just gives him the kiting capabilities against uh, Zin Zhao and Jax. Me too, I, I agree completely. I think, especially if Nidalee gets ahead pretty early, if you go AP on that TF, I mean, it's not like Johns Hopkins really have a real tank to absorb all that damage. If they did, maybe it would be a bit scary here for the Saints, but uh, I think, I think draft-wise, St. Clair definitely have an interesting draft and have a couple couple very good matchups here in these lanes. And Karma does also counter the burst damage from APTF as well. Yeah. So once once he uses all his burst damage, he... It's useless. <laughs> yeah, he has to win on his cooldowns and instead of relying on his auto attacks, which with uh, stack deck has no cooldown. It's just capped on his attack speed, basically. Yeah, so let's see how they decide to play for this one. Do you think we might see uh, early invade this game? Uh, I don't know. No hook champions, but you no know. hook champions. I feel like Saints should play more towards their win condition, which is at this moment smolder with the the scaling. But but it seems like um, Johns Hopkins University has a better early game in terms of level one invades. Yeah, could be very possible. You can see Saints not going to go for anything crazy. Both teams. Basically rolling out the exact same way, and it's good looking like ADTF from the look of things, starting off with that Doran's Blade. Uh, nothing too crazy on the first buys, other than a Ruby Crystal up in the top lane for the Gragas, but... I think that's Sapphire, the actually. Sapphire, sorry. I haven't seen Ruby Crystal in a while. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, even if you want to start Ruby Crystal, you can't even... I don't think you can probably refillable. Yeah, you, it's 400 gold, I believe. So yes. you are definitely correct. Um, he's just looking to poke out the jacks early. Nidalee's landing a couple spears onto Zin Zhao, forcing 
that recall to be stalled that just that much This longer. is really bad for, for the Zinja from Johns Hopkins University. That gives um, Matty the ability to just do his top side completely for free with no contest whatsoever. And if the Jax ever tries walking in here, Gragas can just rotate over and hover this. This should be a very, very good start for the side of the Saints. Oh, this no, this is not good. Very, very dangerous for Jax, who's forced to flash level one. He does get that ward down, but at the price of what? And you can see that it's the Zin Zhao starting on the blue buff, but forced to pop his potion early. He's going to look for the counter invade. Let's see how this goes. He should be able to get at least a couple camps here on the side of Sinclair, but you could see Bakery Boy instantly rotating over from the mid Yeah, they should, they should know he's going straight to that, but looks like they're just going to let him take it. Yeah. Even even though um, Rockwood and Lonzo do have bot side priority, oh, Matt is going. but it looks like they are going to possibly give the red buff, but look for the, the, the first blood onto Zin Yao. Yeah, it looks like that might be the play. Ooh. Oh, the Nidalee Spear misses there onto the Hui. Good dodge coming out there. Zin Zhao is still going ball in, and it looks like the gank might be coming through from the side of John Hopkins University. And there it is. Matty used to He's make the play over two, lane. Zin Zhao such low HP, though, and he will Ooh. go down for first blood. There's Alonzo taking him down. A great start for them, and now maybe they can look for a dive or something here in the ball lane. They don't really have the biggest wave, so I don't know if it's the best play. I think Maddie might just look for one spear. I'm pretty sure that was a mistake from John, from John though, from the side of John Hopkins. He didn't, he didn't have his three-point strike at all. He only had his um, his audacious charge and his W. So he had no knock-up whatsoever for the gank. Yeah, that was not the best gank considering all the circumstances. And speaking of circumstances, up in the top lane, Ricky doing a very, very good job really on up 10 CS and able to get a huge wave shoved in there. Alonzo's gonna get caught though. He'll force out Flash, forced out Ignite will be used Ooh. as well. Rock Boom will get a lot of poke damage back onto the Karma, but Alonzo forced to use both of his summoners there. Uh, getting caught by that Jin W. A bit of a misplay there, but the gold card should be coming out here. Won't come out, but all the damage will, and that oh. will be a kill for Bakery Boy. Flash used by Huey, deciding not to use that cleanse as well. Might have been a pivotal to her death, and having no TP in that mid lane, gonna lose a big wave there. A great start so far for Saints as they're up 1.5k gold in less than four minutes. But it looks like John is also looking for an evade onto top side after seeing uh, Maddie super low after the gank mid lane. But it looks like the Saints, especially Big Boy and, and Ricky, do try and protect him. And oh, Alonzo gets picked off by Jin. Alonzo playing a bit too, maybe recklessly in the ball lane here early, trying to play very, very aggressive. And it's giving them a bit of a lead, but going down there is not going to be the wor the best. Not the worst, not the end of the world, as he's going to be able to get back and not going to give too much over other than the gold. As long as Rock Boom is here and he's able to scale up in this ball lane, it's all that really matters. And there's a fight in the top lane. Ricky going to do so oh, much damage on no. the drag as Zin Zhao's on 1 HP. Should be going down. They should look for the second kill onto the Jax here. He will look to jump away. Has no flash. Can Ricky find the E flash he here onto him? He still spotty spot, yeah. will miss. The Counter-Strike is good. Ooh. The flash comes out from Nidalee, but they should be able to pick this one up. One more spear. It misses from Maddie and Hayam Kyle will able to Make it out alive out of that one. Huey comes here, but I don't know if she has any damage to kill anything here. Ricky and Matty both going to back off as Bakery Boy is just going to get that free push up in mid lane. The TP will be forced out from Jax, who's going to go mid lane himself. And it looks like a bit of a switch of lanes here at the five minute mark. Yeah, very well played game from the side of, uh, of Saints. Couldn't secure the, oh, the no. final kill onto Jax though, but at least they don't lose their lives to Huey. And Zin Zhao has to be careful here. Taking so much damage. Bakery Boy gonna hit that blue card, and this should be a pretty easy kill. Great kill there from Bakery Boy. Now is so, so close to that level six. Ricky oh. gonna be living on one HP, playing it very, very risky, but will be forced to back. There's some great temple plays here from John Hopkins around the top side, but everywhere else, everywhere else around the map. They're yeah. Looking pretty rough considering Zin Zhao is 0 3. Yeah, not, not looking too good for, for John from the side of Johns Hopkins. But I did mention earlier that, that that the Ash would give him a lot of spacing for uh, against the melee carries of uh, John Hopkins. Yeah, absolutely. This Ash is just slowing down that Zin Zhao, not letting him run anywhere. Just so so far behind. I mean, CS wise, Zin Zhao is pretty up there even, but 
He's giving away so much gold to Saints already, yeah. as it is. He won't be giving much more gold, though, for the rest of the game, considering uh, <laughs> the start he's had, unless he gets a kill and resets his bounty there. That one Void Grub's gonna be taken by Matty, but it looks like John Hopkins are just gonna be trying to take this one. Let's see how the Saints decide to play this one. Can they find a gold card onto Huey here? Should be able to find it. And Matty misses that spear as Bakery Boy threw out a blue card there. Ricky's making his way over here. Huey ult lands onto Bakery Boy. He's going to be forced to flash out, but let's see how they decide to play this one. Ricky going to be making a lot of space to flash. Ooh. Ult comes out onto Zin Zhao, but is that really worth it? He saw his flash though. Burn everything on the 0-3 Zin Zhao. I don't know if that's the best play there. I, uh, I know they're trying to get the Void Grubs there, but I think it's just free if they just decide to take it. But Maddie is playing this one a bit greedy. Gonna look to take away that red buff yet again and just deny this Zin Zhao from being able to put himself on the map. Definitely a little overcommitment from uh, Ricky, but that does secure them um, top side of, um, of John Toppy's university. But looks like uh, Zin Zhao and Karma are looking to gank Bakery Boy here, but he does have a pink ward in the, the river bush. The banana bush, as they call it. Do they still call it banana bush? Oh, I don't know how to play anymore as well. We both retired. <laughs> That's it is what it is. Bakery Boy now gonna have a 200 gold bounty early on. On the ADTF, up 1,000 gold at seven minutes is uh, pretty, pretty insane to be fair. Let's see how he's able to snowball his lead here. Big, uh, Maddie's gonna pick up all three Void Grubs for the Saints as we expected in the pregame. Let's see if he decides to make this way over towards this bar lane and play for that first dragon. But John Hopkins have just been losing these early fights. Also can't pick up any objectives. So the longer this game goes, the worse it's going to look for them. Yeah, even even though, just looking at bar lane here, even though both ADCs are, are even CS, Jin does have the one kill though, but it's not really much. Rock Rockman does have an assist, but looking at top lane here. Opa. <laughs> that will be an easy kill. Who are they gonna give it to? Matty using that explosive cast so so well. The Nidalee the Gragas combo we said so so deadly. The belly flop into the spear just does so much damage and there's not much the Jax can do there. Doesn't have TP as well, so Ricky's gonna get the free push there. We'll be able to have a free back. Maybe gonna look to buy his first item here. And now there's another bounty on the side of Sinclair. Maddie picking that one up this way. Is up a level considering all the shenanigans that have happened here. Very surprising that Bakery Boys only level 7 compared to the Hueys level 8. But let's see what they decide to do here. You can see Zin Zhao is around that dragon hovering there as Huey is doing a lot of poke here to Bakery Boy. But it's going to be a gank onto mid lane. This Ooh, spear hits the gold card. Comes and out the instant cleanse. Well. cleanse. It's going to be one more auto attack. It's oh, here. Oh. Maddie almost hits. But a great dodge from Huey here. And the Zin Zhao is going to come and cover this mid lane, but that means St. Clair are going to start making their way over towards this ball lane, and they might be looking for a four-man dive. It's only the Jin here. Zin Zhao is making his way over, but has to be careful to not get caught here. Karma is also here. Jin is on low HP. Let's see if Bakery Boy just decides to flash gold card. Anyone? That spear is going to hit from Maddie. So much damage. One HP. The oh. Ash will find the kill there. Mom, Can they find in. the redive? That spear misses. Bakery Boy gonna tank a shot. They reset the aggro to double kill for Alonzo. It's gonna be a kill for Rockboom as well. Bakery Ooh. Boy will go down. He got won't executed. Give a shutdown, which is very, very crucial as St. Clair have a pretty clean two for O dive. Quay moving over here on one HP. Has to be very careful. Rockboom does have flash, could look to outplay this, but will just decide to shove this wave in. That could be a dive angle here, maybe from Rockboom here, but won't play it too aggressively as I say oh. that will flash onto the way trade one for one the wave will crash so it's not the end of the world as Gragas is just taking free platings up in the top lane Zin Zhao tries to contest but look at that damage the ultimate will come out from Gragas one more EQ should do the job here but the Zin Zhao might be able to find the trade oh, back on Ricky one, HP. one HP Ricky lives going for the first item rod as well for that extra the tankiness <laughs> Great, great play from Saint so far as they're up 5k gold in just 10 minutes. Very well played for the Saints across the entire map from top to bottom. But looks like John Hopkins won't be able to find anything. And Xin Zhao being down 0 and 5, considering an early game jungler as well, is not, not looking very good for John Hopkins as well. 
definitely not the start they were looking for. And the only bright side for John Hopkins is that their bot lane is not doing too shabby, you know. They did just get four man dove, not much they can do about that. But now look at this matchup in the top lane. This Jack so oppressive. Having to buy the first item Hex Drinker, that is absolutely brutal if you're playing Jax. Your damage will just not be online any time soon. As just picking blind top laners, especially into Ricky, is just such a hard thing to especially do. Especially a Jax. Especially a Jax when he's so good on that Gragas. We're going to see an ex uh, cleanse force that onto the Jin here. And, and Jin Ultimate ball. will come out. Alonzo will be going down, but the shutdown does go over to Karma. Rockboom able to do so much damage with that Essence Reaver. Karma's on 1 HP now. He's just standing here waiting <laughs> for the 4 shot as Nidalee is able to kill the Jax across the map. They're able to get that gank off one more time, but Rockboom is getting 4 man. He'll get flashed on. Look at that sidestep from him. Another oh! sidestep. Fancy feed wombo combo. He's gonna be on one HP. Oh, he will in the boy. end fall down to the way. But some nice movements from Rockboom. They're able to stall out so much time, which will give them a top tier one. Give them all the void grubs and a couple of plates down in that mid lane. Josh Hopper just lost so much map pressure going for that play. But is it really worth it in the I don't think so. No. Because they, they're giving over everything. All the all the void grubs. They lost top tower. They're about to lose mid tower as well. And they're about to lose a top tier too, because they're deciding to stick onto that dragon. Yes, they're gonna get an ocean dragon, but I don't know if that's gonna be the game winner here. You see Ricky not doing too much damage to that Jax just yet, but considering the amount of mana and abilities he can just spam out here, and having the six void grubs is just gonna be so, so hard for this Jax to stop. And up 15 CS, doing very, very well for himself. Kraken first item Ooh, on this Twisted Fader. Let's see there as if well. they can find gank here onto Jax. Nearly Spear will land, but you can see Jax not taking too much damage, considering he has that first item Hex Ring. Yeah, just looking at Ricky here, I, I'm actually kind of surprised for uh, the purchase of Rod of Ages, because usually when you're playing top lane Gragas or towards like an AP Bruiser Gragas, you usually see um, the proto belt for the extra utility and magic pen. You would. I think he's just trying to make sure he's unkillable this game with that. Just be as much of a of a body as possible while still doing like you know like a decent amount of damage, yeah. comparable to what you would usually build. It looks like you have an ash arrow. That might be a kill. The TF is able to come in here onto the Jin, and that should be one. Alonzo's gonna pick up one. Wait, does pick up Ricky up in that top lane though? That's gonna be some gold going over to that way as it's gonna be Allura trying to bring his team back into the game, but it might just be a little bit too late. We could see Maddie just solo taking away these crocs. Oh look my at the, goodness. Look at the spears they're landing on command. One more maybe onto the Zins. Oh no, it's gonna be a good dodge there, but Ricky does go down, but doing so, having so much pressure up in that top lane just opens up the map for the rest of the team, and the rest of the team are definitely taking advantage. Maddie just making making it look like javelin tosses are just so easy to hit, like in season one, with their incredible hitbox. Now it's like super thin, but like yeah. still, it's it's still doable. Yeah, especially if you're playing on low ping and you you just it's not the hardest to dodge a little spear. I mean, we can all uh -oh. agree on that. But Maddie just making them. Impossible to miss, it seems like. Having seven stacks on that Dark Seal as well. Probably gonna go for that Magi's sometime soon. As oh, Ricky it looks like. Has yeah. Made his way over to this bot lane. I don't think there's any kill potential here. We'll just look to swap maybe uh, these lanes as the tier two up in the top lane. It's gonna be a sticky taken down. Bakery Boy and Maddie looking for the 2v2 here. Gold card will come out onto that Jackson. They should be able to pick him up. There it is. Maddie, uh, Bakery Boy on that ADTF should be able to do a lot of DPS here. And look at the damage with the Kraken Slayer. It's gonna be able to pick up that Ooh. second as way. Makes her way over. Saints have to be very, very careful here. But one gold card could spell the end of her as Ricky is gonna teleport over. Nice little side step there from Bakery Boy. Ricky decides to teleport up into that top lane. The Bomba will come yeah, out and Maddie is unstoppable. Now 10 stacks on that Dark Seal, and that might just be the nail in the coffin as they go 3 for 0 up in that top lane. Yeah, the Xin Zhao can't, has no breathing room to do anything in this game. If he was looking for any, oh, looking a bit here. It looks like we have to kill onto Jin, and maybe the Karma as well. It looks like we do from Rock Boom, and Alonjo flashes for the volley and doesn't manage to hit it whatsoever. Nice try there, and also Dark Harvest on the Jin. Is that is that normal? I um, I think for lethality gen, it's it's normal. Yeah. Especially in a um, 
in a lane where there's not too much fighting, so I don't really need um, fleet footwork that much. But considering their circumstance, I don't think they would be able to get to that that point in scaling because Saints are going to look to to end it oh. fairly early. And, oh, and it looks like <laughs> he's finally on the board. He did get one, but at the cost of what? Big Big Boy able to get a double kill there. This should be the tier one dropping sometime soon. All five members from John Hopkins are in this mid lane. This Bakery Boy does get caught by the Huey Will go down for sure. They're going to be giving all the kills over to Huey. Great play, but look at the Bomba oh. coming out from Ricky. Able to pick up the Karma. Huey, though, doing so much damage. Ricky does not land the body slam. Will still do a lot of damage here. Jax walking up way too far. Will be able to leap away to his teammate. Let's see if this E lands from Ricky. Won't be able to land it onto the Huey. The Q hits, though. The slow will be applied, and the flash will come out. Will anyone decide to change? This one down, you can see Ricky on the chase looking for something, but the blast cone is used. The E over the wall is gonna hit, and the Q takes down the way. A big kill for the Saints now. They still have that Rift Herald. Wonder how they're gonna use that one. Rock Boom able to st steal away a tiny, tiny little bird there. Bird chicken. chicken, chicken. It's, I think it's a, it's a rat. It's rat. Steal away something there. Get a little bit of gold, but 21 7, up 10k gold almost. St. Clair looking in a great, like they're in a great position to finish this one off early. Yeah, even though John did finally get a kill on the board, he did have to use his flash and ultimate for that fight. But that's gonna that's probably gonna cost him because Dragon did just spawn. So I don't think they'll be able to contest it if Saints do decide to go for this Drake. Yeah, and uh, the Zin Zhao has to be careful here. <laughs> Ash Arrow somehow connects and that will be a kill going over to the Saints yet again. They have that Rift here. Let's See how hard they decide to push here. Jax jumping in. Oh, that's so much damage. Look at that damage. The Ricky on one HP will go oh. down over to that way yet again, but they're going to be looking for the chase here as Rock Boom goes a little bit way too far. Will be going down. They will finally pick up the way, but at the cost of a couple members. But even though it was a 5 4 2, Saints are going to keep pushing down this mid lane. Going to try and break open the tier 3 mid. Try and break open the tier 3 top as the Jin's able to take out Bakery Boy up in that top lane. Another shutdown going over to the side of John Hopkins. <laughs> another that's, charge. that's another charge <laughs> coming out from Maddie. We'll take down both tier 3s and be able to escape with his life. And now the 20 minute mark is coming up. I think we're more than certainly going to see a Baron as Maddie is on 24 stacks of the Magi's. Oh, he has Magi. I didn't even realize he had Magi's. Yeah. That's just saying how far ahead the Saints are, especially not just not just many, just everyone in general. They're just up on gold across the board. Yeah, gold, XP, you name it. But looks like Saints will be looking to, to take the reset and look towards the dragon here. Not unless uh, Xin Zhao is looking towards it, but his team is, uh, is not around him, so I don't think he can look for it. I don't think the Saints will care too much about the Dragon. Might just go for the Baron on spawn, considering they're so far ahead. But Ricky, gonna be looking for a solo kill. Maybe playing a bit too aggressively as the team. I don't think they can kill him. I don't think they can kill him either, considering he has Cosmic Drive now as well. As a Twisted Fate Ultimate will come out down in the mid lane. Rock Boom will fall, fall down first, and the trade kill onto Huey won't come out. So much damage there, but not enough. Bakery Boy, speaking of so much damage, is gonna find a kill onto the Karma there. But this Huey, Getting a couple items now, we're looking very, very tanky as this solo kill in the top <laughs> lane. Alt on top for insurance from Ricky there. Will be a great solo kill for him. Now the push will be in bottom. You can see the Saints are not looking for any dragons. They want to finish this game off right now. Matty uh, landed that Ooh. spear, will pick up the Hui. Can he find the spear onto oh. the Jin? So, so close there. We'll have one more spear maybe onto the Xin Zhao. No, but the, this will secure St. Clair, their first inhibitor. Bakery Boy is pushing out top lane, so the second inhibitor should be going down sometime soon. Here's Maddie, is just gonna take it himself. Nobody can really walk up here. What is the flash from Ooh. Karma as the Jin whiffs a couple of shots as well. Maddie just playing with his food at this point. Going kind of 1v4 in their base. Alonzo is here to help him out. Let's see if a spear can connect here. Just wanna see how much damage it oh does. My oh my goodness, a max range spear onto the Jin. Does about a Three quarters of his HP as the Zin Zhao is gonna go in, but I don't know if in is the play. Is I think I that's think Ricky T being in does have his ultimate again. First inhibitor, second inhibitor now falls down as Saint Clair are gonna choose to back up and probably take the Baron here and look to end the game. They might look, yeah, they're, they're gonna look towards um, Baron and Drake and then reset and then go towards um, 
bot lane just to get the triple inhibitor, and it eventually uh, spawned the uh, the double super lane. Or, yeah, yeah, and then just end the game from there because Johns Hopkins, they're just too far behind to deal with uh, with all the damage coming from Saint and the tankiness. Oh. Of, uh, oh. Ricky missing everything but the ultimate there, but just so far ahead. Able to pick that one up. The Miracle Steel will not come out. Look at the damage they're doing. Bakery Boy pops his ultimate as Rock Boom is going to be looking for oh. something. Alonzo does go down to the Hui, but look at the damage on the flank here. Bakery Boy is going to find one. Rock Boom finds one. It's just that's it. two more members, Jax and Xin Zhao. They're going to be able to pick up Bakery Boy, but that is going to be the ace for the Saints, and that will more than surely be the end of the game. Saints giving us a sub, looks like 25 minute game. Stellar performance coming out from the side of, uh, of Saints here. And they're going to be hitting away at these turrets. That spear is going to land again, and the Jin will die in spawn. They're going to be looking maybe to find another dive onto someone here in the base. Look at the ultimate coming up from Gragas. Wasn't the best one as. Should just be able to hit the Nexus here and finish this one off. Ricky gonna go into the oh, spawn no. as they're doing a little bit of trolling, but they definitely know their limits. The minions are gonna be there to help them finish the game and a beautiful game one from Sinclair. Up almost 20k gold by the end of it. Kind of just had Johns Hopkins University in a headlock the whole game and didn't let them breathe. Yeah, Saints played towards their win conditions very well. They had the early game with Nidalee, and then if that did fail, they also had smaller guys their backup as well. Yeah. And then Johns Hopkins didn't quite play the early game as they wanted to, considering the invade as well. Xin Zhao greeting his recalls too much, getting hit by all, all those javelin tosses. Yeah. So that kind of just like... Um, just uh, made their early game like super, super disorganized to say the least. Yeah, without a doubt, a rough start and a rough game all around for them. But Saints going to be very, very happy with their performance in that one. Uh, any, any really, any highlights here, here from this game? Any players you want to put a highlight on, or was it just a great team performance? I'd say it's a great game overall for the Saints, and then. The smolder as well. We didn't really get to see smolder like scale super high. Yeah, I would. I would have loved to have seen that though. <laughs> like a forty-minute game. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he even um, had the chance to get towards um, two hundred and twenty-five stacks for the Elder Dragon buff as well. Yeah, I don't think so. Because it's a built-in execute. It was tw it was twenty-minute game, so can't really expect. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but Rockman play played it well, maneuvered it well, and. You know, it was a good game from the Saints. But with that being said, we're going to throw it to a, a very, very quick break. And we'll be right back with a draft of game two. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just about to get into uh, game number two or draft number two. I'm joined by Gabriel, who's <laughs> taking over for Tommy after that dominant game one from the Saints. I don't know if you saw too I much did, of I it. Did. You did. I got to see a little teensy bit of it. I, uh, yeah, I had some stuff, got here, and then it's like, oh, shh. It's already started. So I got to see a little bit of the draft. Uh, the drafts were actually really interesting in that first part. We got to see um, Public Enemy number one on his Gragas, which was actually fun. I finally get to see a Gragas play, which was great. He's been really strong lately, so seeing him come out was really nice to see. The Nidalee, which absolutely dominated. Uh, the Smolder, cute little guy uh, coming out. Love to see him. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but what are your thoughts on that last game? Yeah, it was an interesting draft. Uh, some interesting picks that, you know, Nidalee's like a... When, when the Nidalee's picked in a draft, especially in a competitive game, you're like, whoa, like this team is really, you know, they're feeling... Themselves. They're pulling out the big guns. Yeah, like that's not something you see too, too often. But it was a good draft from them in game one, and they just capitalized and played so, so well. But let's yep. talk about the draft here in game two. Same two bans for the, from the first two. St. Clair going to ban out Cassante Serafin again as Johns Hopkins University bans out the brand. And now the Nidalee. Yeah, well, up. they learned the lesson. I mean, I don't know if Nidalee ban is even that good, but they're just scared of Maddie's Nidalee. As St. Clair College have the exact same bans they did last game. John Hopkins have the same bans, except instead of Olaf, they ban out Nidalee, I think. So pretty similar bans from both teams as... Uh, let's see what Saints decide to cook up this time. You know, I heard them talking a little bit between the games. I think we might see some very, very interesting picks coming through. Some interesting picks indeed. I heard they were talking possibly first pick Zyra. Ooh, <laughs> that, Zyra. Was one, that was one of their spicy picks. The first <sighs> pick, Zyra, uh, that could be hmm. flexed mid or support. But, but if I had to guess, Alonzo is definitely going to be picking that one up. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I think Johns Hopkins University are definitely like, what is going on? What, why is there Zyra going to be in our ball lane? Probably not something they play too much against, Ooh. but they're going to pick up the smolder okay. themselves. So Rock Boom won't be able to pick it up this game, as maybe they're going to be the ones looking to scale into the late game and just uh, play the play the early game maybe a little bit slower as they pick up the Bard as well. Ooh, yeah, Bard definitely uh, kind of a. It's a weird combination going Smolder Bard, because Smolder's a really late game champion, right? You want to take something that's going to kind of either let him get a really big early game play and carry him throughout the game so that he can get to late game faster, or you want something that'll, well, help him stay alive in that early game. But a Bard is known for, well, um, going to get the milk, if we can put it that way, when it comes to being in the bot lane. So, past level 3, Smolder should, in theory, be alone, and that will definitely be, uh, be bad. I mean, don't leave your child unattended. The, this is exactly what Bard is made to do. And Smolder is not the champion you want to leave alone. You want to let him scale, you want to let him get into stacks so that he can carry you in the late game. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. The Callista going to possibly get paired up with the Zyra here. Uh, an interesting decision because Callista is not exactly a champion that you're going to see with um, a CC mage like Zyra, right? You're kind of going to see her with um, I want some engage supports or some auto attacking supports like an Ash. Yeah. But this is this is interesting. I'm surprised they didn't go Caitlyn into the Smolder, who doesn't have too much range. As True. Ricky is going to be picking up the Jax blind this time. Last game, he was the one going up against the blind Jax and. We saw how that went. So let's see if Johns Hopkins they decide should, to go yeah, for that with Gragas. The Gragas. Yeah, they should. Uh, there it is. Gragas, there it is. St. Clair just uh, counterpicking themselves, even though it they was. They literally told them if you blind pick Jax, we're going to pick yeah. Gragas. They blind pick Jax, and here comes the Gragas. You, is... you could definitely see that the Saints are. They unlearned their lesson. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're feeling themselves after that game one. They don't really. They're not feeling too worried as. You know, f these are definitely these first three picks from both teams is not something you see all the time. As Johns Hopkins Ooh, decide TF. to ban out the TF, Big Boy enough. did first pick it last game and built it AD, so won't be able to do that this game. Uh, but you know, I want to see maybe. Bakery Boy is so good on those AD mid laners. I would wa love to see like an auction from him or something. A Talon, the Talon auction. Irelia is, is so so good on Irelia. Just something interesting. Sure. Olaf. 
going to get banned away from Johns Hopkins, even though the Jax is already locked in. Yeah, Maybe well, they're scared of St. Clair flexing it and just picking Olaf into that Gragas, which is a pretty good matchup. But that is true. Zin Zhao is going to get picked up again for Johns Hopkins. Hopefully, he won't be 0-6 this game. The Aatrox it will is a Jax jungle. In the top lane, it is, in fact, a Jax jungle. That's a nice little flex pick coming out from them, and we must see probably an AP here in mid lane. I would have to assume we won't. Getting AD, it's going to be a rise in mid lane. I mean, it could also be a rise top Aatrox main. It could be anything. God knows what they're cooking with this draft. But it's going to be a Casio coming out from the side of Johns Hopkins. A very good... Two majors in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, it should I be. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> should, be, should be two mid lane, majors in the mid lane. Like, uh, we no, no, expect. trust. Okay, it's, it's, it's Aatrox mid, rise top. That's what I was thinking. Like, it's, <laughs> it's possible. Is, is rise good into Gragas? Uh, Ryze isn't half bad uh, against pretty much all melees. He can poke back through the wave with his EQ. I mean, he's just gonna EQ. That's that's Ryze. Yeah. EQ, 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 EQ. Uh, I, I I would know. I spammed Ryze top for a while. Um, it's fun, but there's a lot of losing matchups. But I think I don't think Gragas is one of them. It's kind of a more skill based matchup. But I'm pretty sure it's the Aatrox top because Aatrox into Gragas is a strong pick. You yeah, do you not want like it's my permal ban personally. Well, that and set sets just annoying because you 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 throw your ultimate to get him out of the turret and well guess what now he's throwing you under his turret and it's like oh well you cut that out uh but yeah as the game starts off here we're gonna be seeing the runes that they go for so greg is here opting instead of going for the grasp going for the arcane comet so more of a poke build um Afterwards, yeah, standard lethal tempo on the Sin Zhao. Cassiopeia opting for the Conqueror. Definitely a good choice here. Um, even the fact that you want to have that little bit of sustain in those team fights. Fleet footwork on the Smolder. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Usually you would go for something more poke based, but I guess it could work out. Uh, fleet footwork on bar two. When it comes to Aatrox, I mean, Aatrox only goes one room. That's Conqueror. Because more healing. Why not? Uh, lethal tempo on Jax. Fair enough. I don't know if you'll ever even proc that this game, to be honest. You, you probably won't finish it, no. <laughs> yeah. um, phase Rush on Rise, pretty standard. Lethal Tempo on uh, our good old Callista and an Arcane Comet for Zyra. So pretty standard runes all around. The only thing that's kind of surprising is the Arcane Comet on the Gragas. Now, what will be interesting is to see if this is a uh, Roa Gragas with Rod of Ages and like those uh, AP and health items, which is pretty meta right now, or is he going to go full Bomba and go full AP Gragas? Um, I would recommend the Roa build just because yeah, it gives you tankiness and it pairs up so well with his passive. But it could be a full AP Gragas, depending. As we can see here in the bot lane, a lot of trading coming out in these early levels. Just so much potential. Gragas kind of getting zoned off of the wave uh, because well, that's one of the things that Aatrox is kind of specialized at doing in those early levels with his level 1 tower. But it's going to be looking a little interesting here in the bot lane. What are your predictions? If... Uh, if St. Clair can get to level 3 safely in that ball lane. They will just start to do so much poke as mid lane is going to be pretty boring, I would say, for a while. Maybe until level 6. It's going to be farming, farming, farming. Then you can maybe finally see the rise start moving around the map. Aatrox will have a lead over the Gragas in the early goings, probably all throughout the game as long as that battle is isolated. I think playing around the boss lane might be the play here for the Saints. Considering they have the Zyra, Callista, they will have perma push. They could look for some early dragons, maybe, and look to snowball their game that way. But you can see the Jax are already moving down to the bot lane. They might be looking to dive this level one smolder. Look at the amount Closer of just minions they have. The oh, they're not gonna. They're not gonna dive this. They're gonna look for the invade, and all four members walking towards the Zin Zhao is this blue buff. It should be as free as it gets. Bakery boy gonna throw out a Q there. Will blast home out as the Saint Clair are able to pull off the invade very, very well. Yeah, definitely a big level of attention here needs to be paid on all the enemy members because if you are in their jungle, they will collapse on you. But here, they kind of just opt into not doing so. Definitely a good call considering the amount of people that were in their jungle and the power spikes that they had, right? You don't want to take an early game fight at Smolder. You want to kind of just chill, uh, as we can see here. So opted not to go for it here. Gragas trading pretty well with the Aatrox. 
not actually taking all that much damage or at least sustaining very well those W's just poking for so much damage but I don't know how much that Arcane Comet is actually finding use. Um, of course, right, Arcane Comet, really good for poke, but the problem is the only way that Gragas has to poke is with his Qs, which have relatively long cooldowns compared to the rest of his uh, abilities, along with the fact that they have one of the highest uh, uh, mana costs, right? So, you can't poke too much. When you're playing Grasp, though, you just poke with your uh, E, and oh, hold on, here we have First Blood going over to Jax here. Big fight in the top jungle, but ooh, okay, Gragas does end up getting the kill onto the Jax, so it's a one for one. Um, First Blood going to Jax is good. Oh, but, oh hold on here. Public enemy number one, that is not where you want to be with that health. Gragas will end up getting another kill. That is a 2 and 0 oh, Gragas. He is he is getting chunky. Uh, so we're probably going to see his, after his first back what items he's going to opt for. That will be probably the biggest like interest into where that gold goes. Because if that gold goes into full EP Gragas, it might be a lot more terrifying than a kind of hybrid tank AP Gragas. Because if you go hybrid, that health doesn't deal damage, right? Because it's bonus health instead. Um, so, yeah, he won't die, but he also won't deal as much damage. So, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. As we can see, first purchase is a Blasting Wand, but the second is a Mana Crystal. So, what we're it, that is within the path of Rod of Ages, right? He just didn't go for Catalyst of Eons, which surprises me, because usually you want to rush Catalyst of Eons, because it's basically like an infinite mana glitch, right? You, oh, ma infinite mana and health. You take damage, it gives you mana. Use your mana, it heals you. Oh, solo kill maybe coming out from Alonzo, forcing out the flash of the smolder, but the part is there for the kill, maybe, as they're gonna look for a kill up in the middle lane. No flash on this Casio, but Big Creep Boy are gonna have to be careful there. Will fall down. Maddie doesn't have anything as well. Has to be very, very careful without flash and will be able to survive. But so far, Johns Hopkins University playing very, very well in this game too. Ricky in the top lane, trying to find the solo Ooh, kill onto trade. the Gragas. That's great poke, but the blue buff on that Gragas will just give him infinite mana in the standing phase. Rock Boom gets the cannon that time. As it's gonna be a bat coming out from a lot of members here. First resets coming down to Smolder's gonna start off with a Doran's Ring, pick up that page. First All the EQs. Item. Very interesting. Bakery Boy doing good in mid lane against Allura. Both mid laners, 45, 46 HP. He does have a death in that little gank that they tried to pull off, but looking pretty solid. As you said, the Greg is just a bit fed in the top lane, but Ricky still up on CS. Able to keep that lead there as he's gonna be able to get that wave crashed in. No teleport on the Gragas. We'll have a free back and looking to get himself back into the game. Yeah, definitely looking very good on uh, just for Gragas. Although Gragas is behind on CS. That is something that needs to be pulled out. Gragas is behind on CS. Ten whole CS behind. Which means oh hold on here. Are they gearing up for a dive? Uh, that is four people in the bot lane. They might just go for the dragon here, yeah. Opting for the dragon on the side of Sinclair College. I don't think they're gonna even, like, yeah, I don't think John Hopkins is going to contest the Infernal Drake. Uh, but that does mean that, have the boy grubs been taken yet? I don't think they have. I think they must have, because they're not on the mini-map, but it could But their be timer is at zero. So it might be, it might, they might still be there in the fog of war. I'm not too... too might be a bug. Sure. I don't, I don't, I'm actually... Because their timer's at zero, right? Yeah, right yeah. next to Harold, but they aren't on the map. So, yeah, maybe it's a bug. Riot, fix your game, please. That'd be nice. Alrighty. Uh, but back on the main subject. So, first Infernal Drake goes to Sinclair College, which is a big advantage for them, right? But they need to be careful because if they don't play the cross map well, those, uh, those drags turn into Rift Herald and Void Grubs for um, the side of John Hopkins. So they need to be careful as, hold on here, Cassiopeia roams onto the top side. Gragas and, wow, okay, Cassiopeia will pick up the kill onto public enemy number one on that Aatrox. Aatrox 0-2 right now, that is not looking ideal. It is a favorable matchup for Aatrox, but uh, apparently not that favorable. And to be fair, laning against Gragas is a pain in the butt. Uh, have you laned against the Gragas yet? Yeah, I have. I was playing some Euro top. <laughs> Guess how that went. You were playing... Uh, I am disappointed in you. Uh, <laughs> I got auto-filled on the one trick. What do you want from me? Oh, yeah. Okay, at that point. Fair enough. Uh, but, yeah. 
Playing uh, playing against Gragas is practically impossible because he doesn't really have losing matchups. He has like disfavorable ones, but hold on here. This, this is not a good trade from Zin. Jungle. Zin is not looking good. Yeah, no. Oh, Gra oh hold on. Gragas, yeah. Gragas is going to pick up that kill onto the Aatrox. It's just, yeah, he's fed. He's he's really, really fed. This is a 3-in-1 Gragas. It's going to be hard to stop him once that Rod of Ages comes out, which should come out looking at the build. Catalyst of Beyond is almost completed. And assuming that he goes Rod of Ages, he should be buying it on this next back. Uh, unless he gets Lucy Boots. If he gets Lucy Boots, then he won't get the full item, but he should at least have Catalyst of Eons. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's an interesting match because Sinclair was really dominant in that first one. And now on the second match, we've got St. Clair going one in five, which isn't ideal as, yeah, since out here starting up the Void Grubs, uh, this is the second part of the Void Grubs, right? They are, so, because it's nine minutes. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this one develops. What are your predictions for how this match is gonna go? I think Saints will still take it. I mean, if you look down in ball lane, Rocco's at 93 uh. Uh, CS over there because they were four manning it. And the Zin Zhao here will be forced to flash, but the chase will come out for Maddie. It's a 2v2 down in ball lane. Rock will be able to pop the cleanse. We'll be able to find the bard, and the trade will come through. But I think the Kalista should be able to win this one. Lethal Tempo stacked up. A couple more autos. One, two, three, one more. And then the E should be able to find the execute. Nice little two for one down there in the ball lane is the Kalista is going to be the solo carry here, it looks like, in this game, considering the rest of the team's pretty far behind, but as I say that, Maddie has a shutdown on the Jax now as well, winning his uh, little jungle matchup so well, and after that little trade, even though Saints are down two kills, they're gonna be up 1k gold. Yeah, no, not looking ideal for the side of John Hopkins University here. Uh, they were in the lead, and now they're slowly losing it. Uh, only about a thousand gold ahead right now. As Aatrox pops the World Ender, big skirmish in the top lane. But that's not important right now, as there's a skirmish in the top river. Cassiopeia gonna pop her ultimate, but hold on here. The Bard is low. The Bard goes down to Zyra's... Uh, I believe that was her Ignite. Oh, nice. Here, the Root coming in from the Rides. The Stun coming out from the Jax. Jax ends up going airborne thanks to Sin Zhao, and Sin Zhao does end up saving the Cassiopeia, but everybody here is really low aside from him. And yeah, that skirmish in the top lane not resulting in a kill, but Gragas did lose a lot of health. And his CP, he tried to TP mid there, and Ricky was able to stop him from doing that, and able to chunk him out as well. Even without an item, Ricky is trading still pretty evenly, down a level, down an item, up in this top lane, so... Still great play for him. And now let's look down into the ball lane. I think that's the main area of focus here for St. Clair. That Kalista all has the Blade of the Rune King already. Is up so much CS as we're going to be going to a Game pause. pause. No idea why. Have uh, Haven't heard too much of what could be happening. But could be a tech problem. Could be a, a simple Might be thing a tech problem. as a mice disconnecting or something. Or someone could have DC'd. But I think we would have seen that. Oh, and, uh, it pro probably was like <laughs> someone's mic was just muted randomly in Discord. They're like, guys, quick pause. Let's get back on track as we're being baited, I believe. And we're going back to the pause. Um, let's talk about the current state of the game. Pretty even game. Uh, St. Clair have a way, way stronger ball lane as the top lane of... Johns Hopkins University, the Gragas, is just having a great game for himself. The Gragas is having a great game for himself, but he's the only one having a good game. Yeah. Because if you look <laughs> at Castillo Zao, as well. Well, I, okay, yeah, Castillo's having an okay game. She does have a oh, hold on here. There's a gang going on in the bot lane. Rockman going to get targeted by the bar. Oh, it's a the good coming out, game. but that doesn't stun. Since Zao, one, two, third auto does not connect. Other than Calista, Calista can deep, well, DPS a lot. Down goes the Sinzao, down to Rock Boom. Sun going to connect. The chains do lock down the Cassiopeia, and she does end up dying to the Jax. That is not ideal. Hold on here. Smolder calling his mother down, but she won't deal that Whoa, much bah. damage. Big burst of damage, though, does come from the Gragas onto the Jax. Cassiopeia getting the tower in the meantime, as Smolder gets killed by the... or does end up killing the Rise. Wow, that was... that was explosive. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't think that was a good fight from John Hopkins. They're down to TP and also St. Clair have a rise. Just going for that gank is not a good idea. As a smolder walks up way too far. Ricky's just gonna flash on her. Does have the ghost here, but one more Q. Should be able to finish him off. Actually, will be able to make it out alive. But can Alonzo find the route onto the Gragas? Yes, they do. They can find the killer. It would be huge. Great kill there as Rob Bloom's gonna look to chase. Can he keep his momentum going off of these chickens? No, he won't be able to, as it's gonna be another kill to picked up for the Saints. And now they should look to make their way over towards that dragon. Rockboom stepping up a little bit too far. Has those fancy feet. Oh, Look at the root from Alonzo. Three man. Rockboom, fancy feet going over the wall. Bardolph hits onto the Zyra as the knockup hits onto one. Zyra picks up a kill over the wall onto the Zen Zhao as the Saints are just dominating Johns Hopkins in these little skirmishes. Saints not even going for the dragon here. Gonna look to take this mid tower with their void grubs. That's gonna be one play going down. Should be another as Alonzo playing a bit aggressive, but Maddie is gonna get onto the dragon. Ricky's gonna go top and pick up a couple plates in the top lane. And <laughs> at the end of that, uh, Saints go up 4K gold from just a couple of, couple of little kills. Yeah, that is a really big gold lead going on on the side of the Saints. They already have two dragons. I think they have all objectives, right? They have both Void Grubs, or both, well, all six, but both camps. Do they have all six? Yeah, they had all six because they had three Grubs spawning in. So I just thought Zinzao took one, two. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm tripping. Anyway, but maybe two people. Maybe the boy grubs came out of two people, ah, so I'm that's sure. why they, it looked like they're. I think they might have five because I'm almost certain Zinzao took at least one. <laughs> at least one. Ah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Who knows? Anyway, they are ahead in terms of uh, objectives, having those two drags plus all the boy grubs. Um, so it is definitely not ideal for John Hopkins right now uh, as they try and get Okay, get some poke onto the Callista, although the Callista ends up healing off of that. Uh, oh, hold on here. Bulbar comes out. Since out gets the shut down onto the Callista. Very, very good insect there on the side of the Gragas. That is, uh, that is devastating. I mean, you don't want your Callista getting shut down, but hold on here. Aatrox going to go in onto the Cassiopeia. The chains do connect. Minions. Cassiopeia left with almost no HP. Has to pop her all just to try and get away. But her Q's give her... Is. Oh, not enough movement speed. Q1 ends up getting the kill onto the Cassiopeia. Rift Herald here, though, is being taken by Job Hodkins. Uh, but Alonzo's had enough. The Zyra is going to do huge damages this fight. Finds the root, but will get flashed on by the Gragas. But the flash E misses. Maddie's going to be able to get out alive. And this is great stall here coming up from St. Clair. Rockboom's coming back from base as John is on one HP. Bakery Boy doing so, so much. Rockboom's going to pick up oh. one in the corner. Maddie's going to pick up the other. And that's going to be the Rift Herald going over to St. Clair. Call it just a bit of a long fight from John Hopkins. The flash E from Hayam Kyle missing was definitely a crucial part to that as the rest of his team kind of was ready for the follow up. but. There was no CC to follow up on, and the Rift Herald will go down for free. St. Clair just making all the right plays at all the right times. Yeah, as you can see here, they need to let Enos scale up on that smolder. Um, just because I, you have to, right? If you don't, you don't have any damage, you don't have that execute, you don't have that damage that is so mandatory to smolder, right? You need to scale up, you need to have uh, your items. Your items are so important on smolder, right? And as we can see here, he just gets his um, Triforce just now at 16 minutes, which is pretty darn late, right? I mean, we've already, we're already seeing um, Gragas at two, or almost, eh, he's, he's getting to his second item. Um, so you got to watch out with your scaling, right? And your farm. Gragas might be ahead in kills, but he's behind in CS. Actually, just all around on the board, uh, behind on CS. Everybody's behind on CS. All lanes are behind on CS. Even support. But then again, support CS doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, the biggest CS lead that we're seeing here is the small little Callista with a 40 CS uh, lead, which is insane. You do not want such a big lead to be up against you. And we can see it in their items. The Callista already with her Rage Blade, uh, along with the Bork, is a big threat right now. What are your predictions as to how this game is going to move from here? It's just going to get harder and harder for John Hopkins. Zyra finally getting her Leandries will just be able to poke out anyone in her sight. And Ricky, after having a bit of a rough early game, is back even if not even ahead of the Gragas has a shutdown 350 gold bounty bakery boy in the ball lane popping that ghost will look for the gank as well with Maddie that should be a pretty easy kill going down to Maddie there 
great pick from them, and this should secure this tier two as nobody from the side of Johns Hopkins University is even near here. Saints could look to push even for maybe a tier three if they can take this one down without a charge, but they're gonna charge that one in. Who's gonna hop in this one? It looks like Rockboom's going for a ride. Just don't go the wrong way. He is going the right way. The charge should be able to connect. The Bard Oath is good though. Does cancel out that charge, so a lot of damage is gonna be mitigated there. But Saints are going to look to back up, take that third dragon, and they're going to put themselves five minutes away from taking that soul. But as I say that, they all teleport towards the mid lane. They're going to take the mid tier two really, really quickly. And they should make their way over to the dragon, over to the Baron in a few minutes, and look to close out this game as they've blown this game open and taken an 8k gold lead. Yeah, Rise Alt, definitely something that you don't see used optimally a, a lot, but this is definitely one of those times where Rise Alt is used properly, or really, really well, at least. Um, usually you just see it for like, oh no, I'm getting ganked, let me just get out of here. Um, but yeah, getting those team rotations with Rise Alt is so useful and so fun to have, mainly in those more organized settings. Uh, but as we can see here, Sinclair going to pick up this next dragon. I didn't see what type of dragon it is. Uh, what soul are we on? Uh, we're going to see in just a second, I think. As soon as they, they take it, it is Mountain Soul. Mountain so soul. Oh god. St. Serbo picked that up with their team comp. They have the Jax, the Aatrox, and the Rise who will all greatly benefit from that Mountain Soul. I mean, it's going to be very hard for Johns Hopkins to bring this one back. I think as soon as the 20-minute mark hits here, we might see a Baron start from the Saints like we did last game as they look to wrap this one up. John Hop Johns Hopkins are going to need a Miracle and maybe plus another Miracle to bring this one back. Kind of a couple Miracle fights but I just don't see how the Saints can really throw this one away, considering they have such good team uh, team comps for team fighting. Let's see what Rockbloom decides to do. He's gonna force out the TP just from existing. The Gragas will look for the Soul Kill. The Bomba comes out, but definitely not enough damage to kill Rockbloom, but Rockbloom overstaying his welcome, walking up a little bit too far, will get hit by the E flash, as it's a nice kill from Hey, I'm Kyle, and let's see if Johns Hopkins decides to start up the Baron. If they do, that will be the end of them. They definitely cannot do this one. The Saints might look for the 4v5 fight. Ricky's gonna go in there on the Aatrox. Will find a lot of damage. Will get taken airborne. And maybe going a little bit too deep here. Should be taken down in just a second. And down he goes as Bakery Boy is able to pick up one. Matty is gonna be chopping down at the Casio. Is it now it's a 3v3 situation? St. Clair are definitely still stronger here. But a nice little couple of shutdowns coming out from Johns Hopkins University as they look to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, definitely not the best of fights for the side of St. Clair College, but it was a one-for-one, one, right? It's just so much... Sometimes you dash in as Aatrox because you think, yeah, I'll sustain, and then you realize there might be a little bit more people than you thought there was. Which, don't get me wrong, is pretty useful for Aatrox because it means he has more people to omni-vamp off of, but it also means there's a lot more DPS coming towards him. So you gotta watch out on those engages uh, on to what you're doing. And you don't, you know, go too deep and make sure your team is with you. But as we can see here, Aatrox's second item is Edge of Night. Uh, go opting for the Lethality Spell Shield. Actually, an interesting selection here. I don't know if that would be what I would build. Then again, I build a more Bruiser instead of Lethality, so... Kind of an interesting pick, but as we can see here, Jax getting the Sundered Sky, um, the Rise with his uh, Seraphs already up and running. Uh, Callista's still kind of just building out her next item. I don't know, Baron. I think it might be a uh, wit's end. But yeah, Sinclair College here starting is pretty Baron. I mean, I don't think Johns Hopkins can contest Alonso can just... They're just way too late. Baron is a taken Bartolt. We'll hit onto Rockwell, so he has to be careful. But let's see how the Saints decide to play this one. Ricky on the flank doing so much damage, but will be going down. Kind of trading him for that Baron. The Saints decide to do that. There's the stun coming out from Alonso, the root onto the Casio. But nobody is there to follow up. St. Clair will choose to reset. They trade Ricky for the Baron. And now they're going to look to push out some waves as Dragon Soul spawns in a minute 50. They have to be pretty careful here. John Hopkins walking to the jungle of St. Clair. Matty probably in the shop there just doing a bit of sh window shopping and will be forced to use his flash. Definitely an unfortunate turn of events for him there. Don't want to give that shutdown over. But look at Bakery Boy's build. He's 
uh, at most 1100 gold away from that Ravadon's death cap will become massive. But speaking of massive, Alonzo hits a two man route. The ultimate won't come out just yet, but could have been maybe a kill there. Cassio is on three items, and Gragas is gonna have three items soon as well. Those are the two real carries for Johns Hopkins, and they're the ones who really need to show up. But as I say that, Smolder is quietly uh, just stacking up. 167 CS, two items. If Sayus can't get too complacent here and definitely have to play well to close out this game. Yeah, 100%. They have to finish the game before the before the Smolder gets too strong here. Hold oh. on, Rise. That's awarded. And oh, wait, hold on. Rise is turning it around. Okay, it's just a little poke, guys. Just a little poke. The the bomba didn't come out. That's why. If the bomba came out, it probably would have been worse. But yeah, Greg is choosing to save the ultimate here. Zyra missing the root, not going to follow up. Uh, so no engages just yet, but as we can see here, John Hopkins just trying to clear those uh, buffed minions from the Baron as uh, public enemy number one, dealing a lot of turret damage here, going to have only Gragas claps on him as the boys show up, uh, just him, oh, okay, hold on, since out here showing up, okay, now there's Cassiopeia, Smolder calls his mom, uh -oh, Smolder's Ricky. here too. Bardal does connect onto public enemy number one. He's got to watch out here. He's low. He is taken down by the Cassiopeia here. As we can see, oh, Rockboom getting the kill onto the Bard here. Bard overextending oh, Rock Boom. and getting punished oh. for it. Rockboom, wow, he is getting stuck on by that Sinzao. Sinzao going to connect. Wind becomes lightning and does get the kill. Oh, no, wait, hold on. That's uh, Greg is getting the kill onto the Zyra. Not the best of team fights here. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, maybe. Bakery Boy is very, very strong here. They have to be careful here as the TP is coming out from Gragas behind. And this is very, very bad for the Saints. Maddie, though, look at that dodge. Oh. Might be able to make it out alive. Can he ward hop to anything? He's going to hop onto that chicken and will be able to make it alive. And the more time he stalls, the more time the Saints have to come back into this fight and maybe fight this dragon as a teleport. It is coming out from Ricky. Let's see how the Saints decide to play this one. If he can even get the steal here, Maddie would be massive. 4k on the dragon, 3.3. This could be a complete flip. Maddie getting zoned off. We'll look for the steal. Won't be able to find it, but maybe the Saints can win the fight. They find one. Bakery Boy look to, looking to ult out. We'll find it. This is just Ricky all in his lonesome with his seventh death of the game. Not doing too much on that flank and just a little bit too far behind on that Aatrox at this point as Johns Hopkins University are slowly making their way back in this, into this game. Smolder now gonna be looking to pick up that third item and they're able to stop the Mountain Soul from coming through. So they're looking in a way better spot than they were maybe a couple minutes ago. Smolder's building an AP item. He has Triforce, he has um, Spear of Sojin, but now he's building um, He's building an AP, the, oh, what's the name of the mask? It's not Leandri's, it's Abyssal Mask, I believe. No, wait, maybe, I'm not sure. Not but anyways, know. that is an AP item that he's building. That is interesting. The smaller does have hybrid scaling, don't get me wrong. But usually you want to go full on one side. But now opting for some AP is definitely an interesting choice. Um, I mean, the only items that build into that are, what, there's... There's Riftmaker, there's Leandri's, and, oh, what's the other one? Uh, I think that's it. Leandri's, Riftmaker. Yeah, those are the only two items that it builds into, uh, unless I am mistaken, oh, of course. Cassio's but here, World Ender does get popped for the Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia forced to flash to get away, but hold on here. She moved oh, a little bit too close. Bartle does end up stunning the Aatrox, but does not save the Cassiopeia as Maddie takes that kill. I don't know how Cassio got to that spot, but we'll be going down the flash. W from John will miss, and Rockboom's gonna jump over the wall. Gonna use that ward for a little bit extra movement. Maybe placing that ward might have been what saved him, as Rockboom's able to force out a lot. Bakery Boy is gonna get out of dodge there. Gonna play that one safe as Saints look to regroup. Baron spawning up in 45 seconds. They still have a pretty good chokehold on this game and should be able to use their tempo a little bit. But level 16 on the Greg is, hey, I'm Kyle, having an impressive game here in game two after such a rough game one. Really looking to turn things around. I think Saints kind of need to play around Rock Boom and mainly Bakery Boy, who's level 17 on the rise, three and a half items. His damage is going to be absolutely insane in these next fights.
yeah, Rod of Ages is definitely a useful item when you are ahead because it just says, hey, how about a free level? Because, you know, why not? Uh, random... I don't even know why they gave you a free level just because you built Rod of Ages and waited 10 minutes. I, I feel like it's the most passive form of scaling, and it's so valuable. Because it was level... I think it was level 16 when that thing procced. And level 17, like, it, it takes a while to get there, but hold on here. Smolder does have his 250 stacks. He does have that execute. He is scaling pretty strong. Bardalt here, not connecting onto anything. Since out, not able to connect onto the Callista. Cassiopeia ultimate comes out, gets a two-man stun, but not going to find much here as public enemy number one brought really, really low thanks to that Gragas ult. Yeah, John, they... <sighs> Johns Hopkins University just looks stronger in these team fights. It doesn't look like the Saints can get anything done, but saying that Alonzo, Matty, and Rockboom still have their ultimates, and all five ultimates from the side of Johns Hopkins has been used, so... A lot, it's all. I think it's all on Alonzo to find a really big ultimate on this side. Or if he can get like a two or three man knockup, like look at someone like Cassio or Zin who doesn't have a flash. If he can find one of those, let's see if the root's gonna come through here from him. The big engage, Zin Zhao should be going down in the chase, might come through here, but St. Clair Saints now should be able to make their way over to that Baron considering enemy jungler is dead. Just have to not get too greedy and just hack away at that Baron, that's what, exactly what they're gonna do. Let's see how Johns Hopkins decide to play the 4v5. Yeah, they might actually contest this 4v5 here. Uh, not the best of ideas, but Gragas decides to go in, does end up locking down the Callista and shut her down. But now it's a 4v4, Worldender is popped by the Aatrox. He's gotta watch out here as he gets slowed by big that root. cask. But oh, big Rue going down and does end up locking the kill on the Smolder. Oh. Smolder does end up killing the Zyra though, right before he dies, and Jax will kill the Cassiopeia with a little bit of a hop. Yeah, Bard's probably gonna go down here, trying to back, but Big Creep was gonna pick him up. Gragas was able to find a couple picks there, but the rest of his team falls. Baron picked up by St. Clair College, they're able to take an 8k gold lead. Gragas is on four items, is level 17, and scaling so so well as mountain soul is gonna spawn in just a few seconds that should be taken by the saints here i don't think there's any way this can really be contested as we're gonna get some slow motion jungling going and since i definitely trying to make his mind up on whether he should contest this one or not yeah but i want to uh, bring your attention to the lich bane this is not usually what you would see on this build. He went Rod of Ages, he went Cosmic Drive, he went Hextech Rocket Build, but not opting for a damage item, which is kind of interesting. Like, you don't usually build like that um, when you're playing the hybrid Gragas, but here, going to be seeing St. Clair picking up the second Drake, very, very, or the second, the fourth, holy smokes. And that will be Soul going to the side of St. Clair College. Mountain Drake giving them an extra shield, uh, plus that base resistances that it, well, just by default gives. Uh, so really, really, really ahead here if you are St. Clair College in both gold and objectives. Um, do you think there's a comeback angle here? I mean, I already said there was no comeback angle, but Johns Hopkins University made me uh, rethink that statement as they were bringing it back a little bit, but that one team fight just didn't go their way and gave Saints basically everything they could ever want. Now Ricky's on three items, Rockboom's on three items, Alonso's able to pick up his second item as well there, and Matty on this Jax has three items. It's going to be all on this Gragas Cassio, I feel like, but Smolder is still scaling. Bakery Boy is going to be forced to flash. Gragas is going to get caught and if he dies here, the game will surely end. Gragas is going to go down as Alonzo is going to hit that ultimate onto two. The Bard should fall as well. And now Saints should be able to finish the game here. Just not enough firepower here for the side of John Hopkins. Maddie's going to find one. Ricky's going to look for the Cassio on the back line. John's going to be able to make it alive for just one more second. Ricky will pick up the Cassio as the mid lane wave will be taken by Zin Zhao, but the game should end through. Bot here, a couple of hiccups from the Saints here and there, but other than that, a pretty strong showing from them. John knowing he can't just really defend there. this one. Just gonna <laughs> look leave. as his Nexus drops, and that will be a 2-0 for St. Clair College over Johns Hopkins University. Great performance from them, and a very strong team showing. Yes, most definitely a very good performance here. Uh, one of the things that I want to point out is how Sinclair 
Like, they had kind of a rough early game in this match, but then they decided, okay, you know what, maybe we start turning on our monitors, and we start actually playing the game, and then once they turned on their monitors, uh, they definitely got, like, a really big comeback really, really quick, and we saw a lot of pushback from John Hopkins uh, a little bit later on to that game when some others started getting his stacks up and running. The problem is, um, I don't know if you noticed, but he went... 2 AD items, right, with the uh, Triforce and the Spear of Sojin, and then he said, uh, but AP kind of feels good, so I'm gonna go Leandre's, and then he was going for a Rift Maker. Um, so, kind of an interesting build path here, that might have thrown the game a little bit, but maybe it's some tech that I don't know, I don't know, I don't play Smolder, but from the... They got Oreos. They got Oreos? Ayo! I don't, Ayo! Th I don't think they care too much about the Smolder, the celebratory Oreos coming out for the team, you could see how happy they are, Ricky, pulling those out. Uh, you gotta keep up the good team spirits, especially after a pretty strong performance, but a good performance nonetheless. We're gonna throw it to a very, very quick break, but we'll be right back with a quick player interview. That should be exciting, don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. We have a nice little lineup for our interview here. We got Rock Boom over here next to me. We got Alonzo. So, you know, Alonzo's the head coach. I'll ask you the first question. A pretty dominant 2 0 series uh, for the first three weeks of the season. You've been playing great. Uh, what do you think the team's looking like so far, and how are you looking into the season? I think our team morale is uh, pretty high this season, and we've been trying new stuff, actually doing pretty well in scrims and in games. I think the season looks great. Okay, let's talk about today's game a little bit. You know, game one was a really, really big stomp, so we won't look too far into that. I want to talk a little bit about, about draft in game two. So you pick the Jacks on three, knowing that they have Gragas, and you flex it to the jungle. Is that something you guys have uh, practiced before, or was yes. that just something you thought of on the spot? Maddie has been practicing it as a secret pick, and mm -hmm. we brought it out today, <laughs> and it went well. It went very, very well. You got any questions? Uh, I do. So a, a little bit more on the basis of the team composition. So the team compositions, what were the synergies that you guys were going for uh, mostly? Synergies? <laughs> yes. Uh, we were kind of just playing what we wanted pretty much. Oh, like, OK. Kind we of were, like comfort picks type Yeah, thing? we weren't really scared of our opponents. We thought they were pretty easy, right? So we could kind of just did what we wanted and had, had fun drafts. Like we just first picked Zyra, picked like Ash on two. Like Jacks on three, just a bunch of poor fun stuff, to be honest. Fair enough, fair enough. And, on <laughs> and the Smolder first pick. That was crazy. The Smolder was cute, yes. Uh, but speaking of the Smolder, were you guys starting to get scared in that second game? Because they started pushing back pretty hard at some point. Uh, I wouldn't say we were, like, like worried. Because, like, we knew we were just better mechanically. So we could just outplay them in team fights and whatnot. So it was more like, guys... Let's stop trolling and play team fights how we should. <laughs> just kill the front line, play together. And uh, then we kind of did that and we just ended the game. So you guys had kind of a solo queue moment and then started to remember yeah. that, oh, wait, we have comms. Uh, so, yeah, definitely something important to keep in mind, not to get too cocky in fights. But um, the other thing I wanted to point out, the rise was looking really, really good. Is that like a really practice pick or is it just a sort of practice pick? Well, uh, Bakery Boy has been playing Rise forever, I'm pretty sure. Since, like, season two. I don't even know when he started the game. But, oh. uh, yeah, he was kind of just like, yeah, Rise looks good here. And we were like, yeah, we could dive bot. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to make the bot lane. And we no did pain. not do it. Uh, yeah, we didn't dive and we bot. did not do it. Nope. No, we griefed it. But. You went for the invade, but it's okay. Well, there's, <laughs> there's two ways to play. You dive bot if you're more coordinated, or you just get the blue buff if they're ready for it. Fair enough, fair enough. So we did number two. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I mean, you guys won in the end. It was, a, it was a great performance from you guys. And, you know, last question I'll ask either of you. You guys are off to a hot start. What do you guys think you can achieve this season? Like, uh, what, what trophies are you guys mostly gunning for? Like, what leagues do you think you have the best chance at winning? Okay, I think we will put a lot of emphasis on CLO. Mm -hmm. I think we will go to LA, top eight at least. I would say probably top four okay. if we don't get unlucky uh, seeding and groups. And Nace should be finals at least. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two, get two trophies. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> so the standard is high as it should be. You know, now you guys have a solid team. You guys also brought up a uh, support. What's his name again? Mike. Mike. Miracle. Miracle. Miracle, yeah. Um, you know, he, he's a support player, you're a support player. Do you think you're going to be playing more, or is he going to try and slot into the team uh, he's, as the season goes? He's slotting into the team right now. Okay. I think he's very, very good. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a diamond in the rough. He's 18 <laughs> years old. He, he's very eager to, to compete, to improve. It's his first time playing competitive, and I think he's going to take the reins in the future. I think I think he has a lot of potential. Well, yeah, lie. obviously you're the bot laner, so you. Yeah, I think I think he has a lot of potential. <laughs> you guys synergize well. Uh, to be fair, we haven't really scrimmed that much together. And the scrims we did, I was like exhausted, so I kind of griefed it. Not gonna lie, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think he I think he has a lot of potential. Plays a lot of good champions. He's very good at mechanics. His knowledge on like competitive is pretty low because he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of experience in competitive. But with our roster, with our knowledge, I'm sure we can get him up to up to our level pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, well, sounds good. I think that was the last of our questions. Yeah, and we're going to be wrapping it up, guys. So 
Thank you to all of our sponsors. We have Tim Horton, Subway, HyperX, the SRC, and the St. Clair alumni. Thank you to everyone who made this production possible. Everyone in the back, there's Daniil, Matthias, Amanda. Tommy helped us on the desk for first game. Obviously, thank you to our players. We never say that. We should say that more. Thank you to our players, <laughs> for, to our talent, for making this one possible. And uh, check out all of our social medias to not miss any Saints action. We have Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok. We upload there daily, so make sure you guys check us out on that. And I believe we are going to be back here tomorrow at probably around 7 p.m. 4 p.m., sorry, that's an early start. 4 p.m. tomorrow for the LAN, the CS2 LAN. We have our St. Clair Saints going up University of Windsor. It's going to be the first LAN of the semester, and I think it's going to be a lot of, a lot of fun, so don't miss it. It's going to be a great time tomorrow. Any, anyways, thank you guys for watching again, and we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Have a good day. Peace.